Hi everybody, welcome back to Kingdom Titan Basic. Now, today's a project that I'm very excited about and one that I've been putting off for far too long and I think it's going to look absolutely great when it's on the car and it's finished. So, it starts with a new bonnet, which I've just got myself off eBay. Fantastic thing about the MR2 is I think this was 15, 20 pounds. You know, these panels are super cheap, which is great because you can get some spares and you can afford to get this wrong and try again. Now, I've got myself the Lotus Elise S1 style bonnet bent and I always thought these looked fantastic on the Lotus and I thought they would look great on an LR2 as well especially one with a full wide body like we're doing soon so this has to go into this mating the two together is pretty simple I'm just gonna template around this template onto there cut that hole out pop it in and then how it's gonna sit it will essentially sit quite flush but the Lotus so the, uh, the MR2 one has this lovely groove down the center, which on the MR2 feeds air into an intake back here. Now, I'm not gonna need this groove, and I can't really just fill it with body filler, because that would be a bit excessive. So what I think we're gonna do is, the new um, vents will come up to about here. So we'll get a, a plate welded across the front there, and at the end here, I might just use a bit of filler, because again, that's quite shallow. We'll see how that, how that sits at the end. But then what we'll end up with is a flush bonnet just with the low suspense in it. Potentially with some rivets keeping it in place as well for styling, but also structure. I haven't decided what I'm doing on that yet. And we'll see how that goes. But there will be rivets holding it in place. The question is, do I then smooth over them or do I like the look of it? Also a note, uh, you'll notice halfway through this video, I upgraded to a proper uh, mask with filters. Start the job with this. This job creates an unbelievable amount of dust uh, and it gets absolutely everywhere. It is everywhere. So you need this to start with. Okay, so I've just finished cutting the first hole in the bonnet. Now I'm going to be using this to just make sure everything's lined up where I think it should be. We want to cut as minimal amounts out of this bonnet as we can to preserve the structure of it and the strength because it's actually, you know, a bonnet isn't just one piece of metal, it's obviously a crisscross of support structures underneath. And we've just cut a big chunk of that out. Now we want to preserve as much of this as we can. Ideally, we will, well, we'll be able to keep this bit at the back. I don't think we're going to be able to keep this one, but we'll find out as we go. And what you want to be really careful, of course, is all of this is now really jagged metal if you're doing this yourself. So, gloves and don't touch it. Um, these the angle grinders there. I started with the Dremel because it helped me really set my shape out so I could dig in a bit and give the angle grinder a way to go. I'm using quite a large ones, but overkill, um, a handheld angle grinder would be a much better way to do it. But let's have a look now at how this is lining up. So. The holes I've cut are where I want the vents, as it were, to go. And as you can see, that has gone really well. Those are absolutely where I want them to be. And now, I get to just confirm where everything is exactly as I want it to be. It sits back down in the right place where I've marked off. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so, let's cut a bit more out then. I finished making the cuts in the bonnet, for now at least, and as you can see, there is quite a lot of the bonnet gone. I uh, couldn't save much of it. The reality is that this just way this protrudes through the slope, uh, as you can see there, it just means cutting a lot of it out. Still got quite a rigid structure to it though, so actually, I think the bonnet's gonna be strong enough and that's not gonna be too much of a concern for us. So, if needed, we can always do additional welding on the back to make it stronger bonnet, but I think this will be fine. So. I'm actually really happy with how this is sitting, where I made my original marks and template of where I thought it was going to land is exactly where it's sitting. So I think it's looking good. I've uh, now got it, it's not quite flush though, um, it is in some places around here, but then it's also raised up. So what's happening there is the mould is just hitting part of the side sill, so I'm going to do some final trimming 
just in those areas to get it to sit perfectly flush. And then what we get to do is go around with the drill and put holes through where the rivets are going to go. But just for now, make sure everything's perfectly lined up. I'm just taking a bit of time to go around all the really kind of rough edges. You know, when you're using an angle grinder, you get lots of really uh, coarse and really sharp bits of metal there. Just going along all the edges, and whenever I feel any kind of roughness, just using the Dremel to just very neatly just touch them up um, and just make sure there's no bits of jagged metal there that could ultimately damage the mold, but also um, just going to make sure that you know, going forward, I'm going to be able to lift and open the bonnet without having risks of uh, stabbing ourselves in the hands. What we're going to do is pop rivets around here and some from sealant. So what I'm going to do now is start by taking out some cutting, uh, drilling some holes in the actual bed itself, which I can then use to line up on the bonnet. I can then use my punch to then mark on the bonnet where those holes are going to be and then make sure everything's lined up and make sure it's absolutely dead straight before I start bonding this in because the worst thing in the world would be to realise it's a bit wonky once it's finished. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got this temporarily held in place using really simple, everyone's got them, little paper clips. Now I've used red ones so they're easy to see, uh, hopefully for yourself also, just so I know where they all are. And I've gone drilled through and they're in the corner spots where um, there will definitely be rivets going. What I'm then going to do is go around and do this the whole way around finally to measure out and mark where my rivets are going to be. And what that will allow me to do is they will essentially act as the guiding holes for the rivet holes when I come around to drilling those once I've decided what size they'll be and what rivets I'm going to use. But for now, what I can do is go around the inside and I can just see everywhere that the mould is pressing, uh, so the, the part is pressing against the bonnet so that it's not going to sit flush and it's creating a pressure from the back. That's going to be a problem for when I bond it. So if that's pushing away or helping it lift in any way, that's going to prevent it from actually um, bonding together. So I need to go around and where that happens, basically just use a pair of pliers or even maybe even grind it out a little bit more. But just bend it back, grind it out, just make it so that it's not in the way so when I know I've got the right size hole uh, before I actually bother going around and doing the final sanding to make it all really super smooth. This is all nothing too jagged, but I wouldn't want to leave it like this. Now that we've drilled all the holes, um, which are going to be the guides for the rivets, the next stage with this is, this really depends on what you're doing with your bonnet. Now, if you're doing an MR2 bonnet, you've got a big groove here, which I think I mentioned earlier, which is a bit of a challenge because that won't sit flush. And if you put that just full of body filler, then that's just gonna be a big chunk of filler sitting on a really flimsy part that's probably gonna crack over time. So one of our range is to have a specialist come and actually weld a plate of steel in there for me, which covers the gap, so that I can have a nice flush bonnet. I'll then be able to rivet through that steel as well to create some additional uh, mounting points for the vents there's in the center. So we're gonna cover that with uh, steel, so I won't put the uh, the vent in now, but what I will do is go around all of these edges um, and I've sanded them all back using the, uh, the electric sand drill and uh, bits for that. So these, you know, quite comfortably go over this with my hands um, just to check. You know, that's been really well smoothed off. Um, it's you know, This isn't the check, I wouldn't recommend you just rub your hands over this, but that's the kind of finish that you're looking for. So that's now pretty safe to be around and work with. So now I'm going to paint it, because now that we've exposed the actual bare metal, that's going to invite rust. And the problem with this, let's say this section here, where I'm going to place over it, seal over it, and then um, anything underneath that, which is exposed, if moisture gets in there, the bonnet could end up rusting from the inside out. So we need to cover every single part of this exposed metal with hammerite. So, you know, hammerite, direct to metal, rust protection, I've just gone for black because it doesn't matter because nothing's going to be seen. Any of it that is exposed will be sanded back later anyway when we paint the whole bonnet. So what you want to do is just go around and cover, you know, touch up anything where the paint's been broken or gone through to make sure that no moisture is going to get in there later and completely ruin your beautiful bonnet.
I just got to run it back from the welders and they've done a really good job. So as you can see, up here in the top section where we had that indent, it's now entirely smooth, straight across there. If I turn it this way, it's a little bit easier for you to see. Nice and smooth. Now what that's done is that's gained me, as you can see from this angle, down there, maybe about a centimetre and a bit more height in that space. And what that really means is that I won't have to do over a centimetre's worth of filler all the way through there, as I mentioned. So now I can draw some holes in here, and it's time to rivet this thing together. So this is all now one piece and the vent is riveted to the bonnet, uh, that's all bonded now. Um, however, it's going to take 24 hours for the adhesive underneath those rivets to set as well. As you saw, I did the adhesive on the edge and then um, riveted it in. So give it as, as good a fix as I can get. Now that wasn't without its challenges, I had to redo one of the rivets um, and actually at the rear here, that plate raise isn't high enough, even though it's flush with the bonnet, to make these two um, holes here fit, because I'd have to actually bend this a bit. You know, there's a small crack that we can fix later uh, in order to try and match those two together, make those together. That's not going to work. But in general, I'm very happy with how this has come out because it's now one piece and it actually looks, it's, you know, it looks as it will. It just needs filler, sanding, flattening, priming, painting, and wrapping. But uh, not without its flaws. But it's gone well. So now the adhesive is set, we've got a really strong bond between the two pieces, well now one piece. What we're going to be going for though is a really smooth one piece look to the finished product. So that's going to mean lots of filler. So now it's time to get the sander out. I'm going to sand the whole bonnet though because I'm going to be doing priming and painting of the whole thing anyway. So there's no point in just working in the localised areas around the, the new uh, fitment at the moment. So I'm going to start with a nice, really rough one, just to make sure that the adhesive, um, sorry, not the adhesive, the filler fits really nicely to it and helps bond it. And then we'll go to finer as we do our iterations of filler and get a really smooth finish. So now it's filler time and I've gone with Easy One by Upol. I've gone for this one because it's for deep repairs. I think that's probably the most applicable to where I've got this lip around the edge which needs filling in. I'm going to use, uh, try and smooth off this front section and also um, where I've got slight raises in some areas, we're going to be filling that as well. So I think that's probably the most applicable to what we've got. As for how to use filler, there's plenty of videos on YouTube I'd recommend you look at. Um, I'll put some of the links below. And of course, in general, you want to be mixing it with your Foley, putting in your hardener, I've got myself a separate mixing plate as well, which would be really helpful, and a plethora of different uh, trowels to make sure I can get in and out of every area. So just a quick note, I've actually made a slight change in my design. I'm actually going to go for a completely smoothed over look. 
which means I had to fill uh, right over the edge of the rivets and up to the top here by where the lip is. So there's quite a lot of filler left, so I'm going to be sanding back now. But when I'm finished, the filler will probably reach all the way up to the corners of the bonnet, just to get that really nice smooth texture going from here to the new elevated level here. It means quite a, you know, it's quite a lot of filler in one direction, let's say, but actually it's going to be quite thin and just slowly building up to make, make sure I've got that sort of smooth gradient rather than there being a, a little bit and then a big lip where the new piece is. I want it to look like it was designed to be there. So, I've now finished with the filling and moulding. Now, what I've done is I've gone around with a really coarse piece of sort of 60, yeah, 60 in this case, grips uh, paper, just to help get it all level. I'm now going over with a much finer sort of sponge, sanding sponge, which allow me to get all the right curves on it and things like that. I'll probably then do a wet layer, at which point I'll just, you know, a nice wet sand, some fine stuff, then I'll do a bit of primer to get it all one uniform colour. And at that point, I think I'll probably discover a, a few more imperfections. So we just, uh, sand that back, a bit more filler, and then keep repeating that process till we get it absolutely perfect. So it's now primer time, and I'm going to be using the Isopon primer, which is the same as the filler I've been using, and uh, we're going to just fade a whole lot black, and then I'll probably be able to see, as I said, quite a few imperfections. So we'll do your sanding, um, and then we'll kind of do a bit more filler, a bit more sanding, then we'll use a bit more primer, and then we'll go through these cycles until we have a really nicely smooth, wet sanded prime and ready for paint project. Now that I've started the painting process, there's been one or two little errors, mainly where an actual drip has landed on the paintwork. It's because I'm using rattle cans, if it you know, catches a finger or anything like that, it's going to cause a little paint blob to fall on the part. And that's happened in two or three areas. Two of them were absolutely fine, I managed to get to them in time, and I just sanded them back a little bit, just through that top layer of paint, and that's fine. One of them, though, unfortunately, was quite thick, so I had to sand it back to the actual part. So I've just primed the area again, Sanded that back a little bit in a minute, and then I'll be just continuing as I would normally. I've done about two, three layers now. Uh, that's about one can of the paint I've got. I'm going to go through another three cans to really get on a nice, thick, even coat though over time, uh, and not brush it. And then I've got two or three cans of lacquer to go over the top as well, because the more lacquer you put on, the more protective it's going to be. But again, with the paint, same thing. You don't want to rush it and concentrate on an area, so you end up with quite a lot of overspray. But that means that you get a nice even coat. So I've got a good couple of cans to get through. When I'm finished, this should be looking like a very nicely done part.
So I've left it for 24 hours now and the bonnet has dried really nicely. It's time to put on the clear coat. So I'm using uh, Isopon again. Again, it's the same primer I use, so I'm trying to stay with the best set, as it were, for, as I can. And a lot of some slightly shiny areas still, I think that's going to even out once we get this off. So we'll do probably around uh, eight or nine layers, basically just going to keep going until the can's empty, and then we'll see what we're left with. But now what would be the final stages of lacquer, but I took a break out from this to cut the holes for the aero catches, which as you can see are going to sit really nicely there and there. Now I've done a separate video on that because that's a whole different process, but that has meant that there's been a little bit of overspray when I've tidied things up, and um, I've actually undercoated the entire bonnet as well, so it's black all the way through, you haven't got the blue and the white from the fiberglass and the filler all underneath there, it's all black, that's all coated as well, so now I'm going to Sand it back a little bit, I think there's some touch-up areas needed, and then I'll get around to the final layers of lacquer. So the bonnet is now finished, as you can see the error catches are back in, it's been painted on both sides, and it looks fantastic. I know it's going to look even better on the car, so let's go and check that out. And here it is, the finished product. So I can't explain how happy I am about how well this has gone. So let's talk about everything we've done and summarize all the progress we've made on this. So of course, originally it was that flat Toyota bonnet. You know, we cut the holes, we've gone through the bonding process, the filling, sanding, priming, painting, layering, and then of course the arrow catches and putting it all back together. And this is how we've ended up. So we've got the mesh in there now, we put the, the washer jets back in, that vent we spoke about earlier for the air conditioning, etc. that still works. And yeah, I couldn't be happier with how this is finished. Hopefully, you know, if you're gonna try one of these yourself, I really hope yours goes as planned as well. So let's take a quick look underneath. So there you go, as I mentioned, I had sprayed it all black as well, so that's all protected underneath there as well, and tried to tidy it up as best I can. And, you know, I've done a, a special video, sorry, a separate video on doing the arrow catches and putting the mesh in, because that might be useful to you if you're not doing a bonnet, you might be doing a bumper or something, so that could be quite useful. And the arrow catches themselves are a whole other process. But yeah, that is, that's a project that I'm very proud of and I'm so happy it went this well because it was the first time I've ever tried using filler or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, very happy. Now on to the next big things. So the reason I'm up in this new workshop for this part of the video is I've actually road tested this as well. So I've put a couple hundred miles on it. It's still in one piece, which is great. And I'm now going to be doing a whole you know, strip down of the car. Hence why you can see the roofs up on the, on the roof already. Um, the whole back end of the car is already missing. So I'm going to be stri fully stripping this car and going for that full wide body kit I mentioned earlier. So I'm going straight from this into that. And this car is going to look amazing. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what you see. If this is entertaining, it really helps us as a channel. And I can't wait to show you this new car's whole look. So thanks very much and see you soon.